what are single instruction multiple data instructions and how can they help us significantly speed up our digital signal processing code. You learned all that in this single video. Hi everyone, my name is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you how to process sound using self-written software. In this video, I'll touch on what is SIMD, what is single instruction multiple data instruction, how can we use it, then why is it useful in digital signal processing, and also what disadvantages does it have. We'll conclude with a simple SIMD code example. But first, let's talk about why do we need SIMD at all? Well, if you know something about audio processing, it is often done in blocks, where each block is a buffer of samples. And these samples represent, for example, 10 milliseconds of audio. And we typically have much less than 10 milliseconds to generate these 10 milliseconds of samples. And in this very short window, less than 10 milliseconds, we need to feed a lot of processing, for example, sound generation, filtering, dynamic compression, and some other audio effects. So we typically want to have our software as optimized as possible. And that's where SIMD comes into play. SIMD, in other words, single instruction, multiple data instructions, are special processor instructions that allow us to operate on more than one variable at once. So in a typical code, if you wanted to, let's say, add two arrays of data, you would add the elements of these arrays one by one. Whereas when using SIMD, we can add bigger chunks of those arrays with a single processor instruction. So in general, what can these processor instructions do? Where first of all, we need to somehow inform the processor that we want to operate on more than one variable. And for this, we'll use so-called load store operations. So we'll get our data to the special processor registers. Then, once these data are in the registers, we can perform a number of operations on them. For example, we have arithmetic operations on one register, such as floor or ceiling functions. We have arithmetic operations on two registers, for example, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. We then have logical operations on two registers, for example, AND operation or logical OR operation. Then we also can convert the data types that is stored in these special registers. Then we can also shuffle the variables in the registers to so do certain permutations of those variables. Finally, we can also do comparisons of the values in registers so we can compare the content of one special register to the content of other special register and then obtain information which of these elements were equal in a third register, let's say. And finally, most of the SIMD instruction sets implement special instructions for digital signal processing operations that we, of course, want to take advantage of. Okay, we know what SIMD are, we know what can they do in a bigger picture, let's say, but how can we use them? Where first possibility is that we don't do anything at all and leave everything to our compiler. Nowadays, C and C++ compilers are so specialized that they are able to detect certain operations and perform so-called auto-vectorization. So they automatically translate our code to operate on bigger chunks of data than just one. However, that's not always possible because the compiler, however smart it can be, it cannot predict what do we want to do with certain operations. So in general, we need to instruct the compiler on our own. What do we want to do? We, as programmers, have a number of ways how we can interact with the processor to make it execute these special instructions. 
on the very low level, we can use these instructions directly. So processors can be programmed using assembly language and these SIMD instructions are special assembly commands that we can use either in assembly programs or in ASM blocks inside C or C++ code. A little higher are so-called intrinsic functions. Intrinsic functions are higher level functions typically implemented in the C programming language which are a mapping to the C language of those processor instructions or a combination of them. We need to include relevant headers and then we can use these C functions which under the hood performed CMD processor instructions. Finally, we can also use dedicated libraries that provide a higher level of abstraction. What I mean by this is, for example, the JUICE C++ framework provides a class called SIMD register and JUICE is responsible for determining which registers are available on a certain machine and then run the according processor commands for that processor. And we as programmers have all this low level code abstracted out in that single class. So we know that SIMD are special processor instructions that allow us to manipulate more than one variable at once. But the thing is that each processor has their own SIMD instructions. So what are the most popular SIMD instruction sets? In the x86 processor family, which are typically manufactured by Intel or AMD, we have three main SIMD instruction sets. The first one, MMX, is the oldest one. It has 64-bit registers and it allows us to operate only on integer variables. Its successor, the streaming SIMD extensions SSE, have already 128-bit SIMD registers and allow us also to perform floating point operations. And then is the AVX instruction set, which has 256-bit registers. And in the case of AVX 512, we have 512-bit registers. So if we have 32-bit floating point numbers, we can easily calculate that we can fit 16 of these floating point numbers into one register. Imagine being able to operate on 16 variables at once. And finally, in the ARM family of processors, we have the NEON instructions. And these are incredibly important because NEON instructions are mandatory for all Android devices running Android 6.0 or higher. Neon instructions are also available on some of the Apple hardware, for example, iPhones, iPads, and some Macs. Now that we know that SIMD are special processor instructions that allow us to operate on more than one variable at once, we may think why is it so useful in DSP? So the first reason that comes to my mind is that a lot of digital signal processing algorithms are already designed with vectors in mind. They use the vector notation. And this vector notation can then be somehow easily translated to SIMD implementation. Another reason is that in digital signal processing, we often want to do the same operation over and over again, but on different data. That is why it is very beneficial that we can use SIMD to perform the same operation on more than one variable at once. Another reason is that in digital signal processing, especially in audio processing, we have what is called the block processing. So we receive samples in blocks and then we also uh, output a block of samples. Using SIMD, we can divide these blocks into smaller blocks and perform the DSP algorithm that we want 
of these smaller chunks instead of one by one. But these blocks are also often of length that makes them easy in, for vectorization. Finally, SIMT is also useful because SIMT instruction sets often have special digital signal processing instructions that facilitate the implementation of DSP algorithms even more. For example, the NEON instruction set has out of the box multiply and accumulate operation. Okay, now that we know why SIMD is so useful in digital signal processing, let's talk about some disadvantages of SIMD. The first thing, which is very difficult, is that we as programmers, if we want to have portable code that uses these vector instructions, we need to take care that we support all the possible instruction sets on different processor architectures. And this is very difficult because each instruction set may be different and may have subtle differences between each other. What is more, we need to determine on which processor our software runs on. And this is not only a compile time problem, but often a runtime problem. So we need to perform runtime availability checks whether we can use actually some instructions. And if not, we need to switch back to the scalar version of our algorithm. So instead of implementing just one algorithm, we need to implement several versions of them. Then, SIMD instructions are often most um, useful, have the best performance when they operate on aligned data. And this is difficult because typically the data that we have is unaligned. If you don't know what aligned data is, then I have a video on this topic, which I link to in the description below and you can check it out. Then often we need to deal with certain cases where we cannot vectorize all of our data. So for example, we may process part of the data with our SIMD instructions, but then we are left out with a few single samples at the end that we need to process separately. And this again lengthens our implementation using SIMD. Then there is a problem that SIMD instructions are often uh, hard to read. So they are certain mnemonics as typically functions in C that tell us if we operate on floating point numbers and how many uh, variables we want to fit in a certain register and what operation do we want to perform. And these abbreviations are often very hard to read and also very hard to spell. Finally, there are quite few learning resources on the topic and that is the reason why I'm doing this video to kind of fill this gap on how to use SIMD in digital signal processing. So if you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up and consider buying me a coffee over at buymeacoffee.com slash Jan Vilcek. Okay, now that you want what SIMD is, let's finally implement a very simple SIMD example. We will write a simple C++ program that adds two vectors using SIMD instructions. First, let's define the signature of our function. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to include the relevant headers. Now we need to allocate the result vector, so the vector that will store the result of the addition of the two vectors. Here we assume that A and B are of the same size. If you want to implement it in a different environment, then you of course can perform some kind of a runtime check. Now I want to calculate how many samples I can process with my vectorized code. I am using AVX instruction set, as you remember, these are 256 bit SIMD registers, which can fit eight floating point variables. So I will calculate how many groups of uh, variables of size 8 I can process with SIMD instructions. 
okay, this many samples I can process with CMD instructions. So let's now iterate over this many samples and perform the addition. The first thing that I need to do in each loop iteration is to load the data from the vectors to those special SIMD registers. We need to do it with the load function. As you can see, I'm using the AVX instruction set. So the MM256 means that I'm using 256 bit registers. Load is the loading from memory to the special register that I mentioned. The U stands for unaligned access because I assume that my vectors have unaligned data. And then PS stands for single precision, so 32-bit floating point variables. And as you can see, I am passing a pointer to memory from which the variables will be copied. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two registers. Okay, so again, I'm informing the compiler that I want to add, we have this add in the function name, two 256-bit registers containing 32-bit floating point numbers. Once I have this result, I want to store it in our result vector. Okay, and here, as you might guess, we store the variables from the register in the memory and again, this U here stands for unaligned access because again, our result vector has unaligned data. And that's, that's it. Actually, we implemented all that we needed in our loop. So now what is left is handling all the samples that couldn't be vectorized. So I'll write that in a simple scalar loop. The last thing that we need to do, of course, is to return the result. Okay, that's our simd add function. Now let's write a very simple code that tests this function. Okay, so what I did here is I include the iostream header to be able to output something to the command line. And here I am creating a vector of 17 ones. And 17 because I want to make sure that it's not of a nice vectorable size, but I want to make sure that it does the correct thing in our scalar code. So what the simd add here will do is it will allocate the result, then it will calculate how many samples it can vectorize and in this case it is 16 because we have uh, two blocks of size 8 inside the vector a and then it will perform this simd loop so again uh, load the unaligned data to special simd registers as you can see this is of type 2 underscore m 256 that means that it represents a 256-bit SIMD register. Then I'm going to perform the SIMD add with a special intrinsic function. And finally, I'm going to store the result in our result vector. And then I'm handling all the cases. So in this, uh, our example, this is just one single sample at the end. Uh, I'm going to perform normal scalar addition and actually that's how you would write this function if you didn't have SIMD instructions. And then I'm going to return the result which is called in a variable and what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm uh, first uh, putting out how many elements there are in the vector. So we expect to have 17 elements in our result vector because our A vector also has 17 elements. And here I'm writing out every single element that is in our result vector. And here I expect to have only twos because I added 
two vectors that had only ones in them. Okay. okay, and the last thing that we need to do is we need to compile our program with a special command that will instruct the compiler that we're using the SIMD instruction set for a certain processor. These options are different on different compilers. On the Microsoft uh, C++ compiler, it is slash arch colon AVX, but on G++, this is this dash M AVX. So let me compile and run this. Okay, and our result vector has indeed 17 elements and all of them are two. In this way, we wrote a very simple program that adds two vectors using AVX instruction set of the x86 architecture. And we did that using intrinsic function, which are available by including a specific header and then compiling our program with a specific option that tells our compiler which instruction set that we want to use. In summary, in this video we learned that single instruction multiple data SIMD instructions are special processor instructions that allow us to operate on more than one variable at once. We also learned that different processor architectures implement different SIMD instruction sets and this needs to be handled at both the compile time and the runtime. Then we learned that SIMD can make our digital signal processing code significantly faster, but often at the cost of code complexity, the portability of the code, and also expert knowledge which is needed to implement these algorithms properly. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on the upcoming video when I want to show you how to implement a finite impulse response FIR filter using SIMD instructions. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.